Hello there and welcome to a brand new episode of Hala Kuwait. My name is Tariq Al Aryan and we're coming to you live from the Ministry of Information Studios right here in downtown Kuwait. And I hope everyone out there is having a very nice evening wherever you may be watching tonight's episode of the program. As usual, the camera crew have been very busy filming all around the state of Kuwait. We have a lot of great reports to get you caught up on, time permitting, on tonight's episode of Hala Kuwait. And uh, we'll be joined very shortly by our guests right here in the studio. We'll be joined by Iman Al Adsani. And Iman is the founding member of Team Hawk, which is, stands for Hovering Wings of Kuwait. And that'll be our interview segment coming up in about uh, seven minutes' time. But right now, we're going to move on to our first report right here on Hala Kuwait. And we're going to go take a look at the Youth uh, Volunteer Forum to combat extremism. So let's go take a look at this forum and see what was discussed. Stay tuned. My name is Nawaf al I'm a member of uh, Hovering Wings of Kuwait team, uh, an aerial photographer from Kuwait. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to show uh, the beauty and to show the love for our country, Kuwait, and to develop the, any kind of charity in, um, in Kuwait. Our goal to define the drone itself and, to the, uh, and the right way to how to use it. Thank you. Good evening, this is Shada Thwaini. I'm one of the group, the academic coaching group. Uh, our aim are the students from the 9th grade to the 12th grade to increase their uh, uh, studying skills and to choose their major, major after high school and uh, uh, to prepare them for the exams. Greeting, this is Ali Dashti, a member of the academic coaching uh, volunteerism team. Uh, we are here to support the students to improve their uh, academic and uh, study skills in their uh, life as well as the, uh, uh, the four aspects, the four main aspects in their life uh, and the uh, social aspects and the academic aspects as well. Uh, we are the first uh, volunteer, volunteer team uh, f from his kind uh, in Kuwait uh, to support the parents and teachers and students uh, as well. Our services uh, are aiming to provide uh, the uh, study skills uh, for the uh, students as well as uh, the, uh, to, to choose their majors according uh, or based on uh, scientific uh, categories and standards uh, rather than uh, their desire uh, f that, that came from their parents or their friends in the uh, society. We are providing our uh, training courses and uh, workshops uh, for specialist academic uh, coaches uh, really trained with the uh, award, uh, well experienced in this field uh, to support uh, our uh, society because we believe and our uh, vision is that the, 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 the individuals uh, are the core of the society. If we, if we want to improve our society, we have to start from improving our individuals. Thank you for your support. Well, we're back uh, right here on Hala Kuwait, and I hope you enjoyed taking a look at that uh, forum, the Youth Volunteer Forum, 
to combat extremism and a very successful forum a lot was discussed uh, at the forum and uh, right now we're going to move on and uh, meet our guest that we have right here in the studio we have with us Iman Al Atsani and Iman is a founding member of Team Hawk which is uh, Hovering Wings of Kuwait uh, Iman we'd like to welcome you to the program Thank you for having me it's a pleasure to be here Nice to have you with us right here on the program I know the last few days, uh, you and the team have a very busy schedule, so we appreciate your time with us uh, right here in the studio. And uh, Iman, maybe you could tell us a little bit about uh, the team, the story about how you all got together and uh, what, you're, what you're doing. When were you formed? A little bit about yourself and the group. Um, so basically, we are. Uh, the story started with the concept uh, of uh, knowing aerial photography. Uh, the uh, technology was presented to the consumer market here in Kuwait. Uh, we all took it in as a new hobby and found it really interesting. It evolved to having um, gatherings and uh, training sessions in the country. That so when you say aerial photography, Iman, what do you mean by that exactly? Aerial photography is the ability to take pictures and videos from uh, high altitudes uh -huh. uh, using uh, UAVs or what they call drones. UAVs is basically the un unmanned aerial uh, unmanned aerial vehicles. And that's what you have right here is a drone. Yes. That's right, you have right here in the studio. That's correct. Okay, our director will be taking a look at that and uh, while you're talking and uh, tell us more about the, the team and uh, when you were formed and a little bit more about that in detail please. Uh, the team was formed during uh, uh, an, an occasion which was basically the National Liberation Day of Kuwait. We decided, that we got a concept of having to participate in this volunteering work so the, 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 the group came about by creating this video. The video was eventually uploaded on YouTube and it went viral. It was also distributed on social media and uh, the uh, channels on TV. We were very, very happy to see the success of the video. And uh, according to that success, we thought, why not make a team? And then Hawk was born. So you got motivated after everything went uh, successful on the various social media outlets, huh? Very much so, yes. And we like it as a hobby, so it's a combination of volunteering work in addition to the hobby uh, and doing it all for the sake of the country. Well, that's very good to see the patriotism of the uh, young people right here in the state of Kuwait. And uh, Iman, the name of the team mm -hmm. and the significance of its meaning. Can you tell us more about that, please? Sure. The name is Hawk. So when you hear the name Hawk, you, you might think of the uh, bird of prey Hawk. Who actually, with the extended wings and, and flight mode, on having to travel and or fly in the uh, high altitude mountains or summits, and that's basically resembling the hobby itself. Going back to the drone, having to fly the drone and be able to see those uh, horizon uh, scenes and views. So we thought it would be catchy to have the name Hawk linked to that bird and to, to name it as Hovering Wings of Kuwait. Okay, now uh, this drone here, it's of course manned by a remote control that you have with you right there, right? Yes. Tell us a little bit about that setup and uh, what you brought with you to display and show for our audience watching, please, Iman. So the evolution of aerial photography took place um, a few years back. It's a new technology and it started with uh, different types of drones uh, and eventually evolved to what you see in front of you here. This is an Inspire 1. Um, it's my choice of uh, a drone because I find it, uh, it suits my needs and my... Uh, and why is itself. that? Why is this suitable for you? Because of the advanced uh, specifications of the drone itself, I mean, the fact that it comes in 4K, uh, the flexibility of having to control it and see the stability uh, factor in the video and the outcome of the production once we're done shooting, uh, I find that this is more suitable. Uh, the remote also comes with an extended range uh, receiver that displays the views in an HD mode that you can see on your iPad, uh, a mini iPad, your iPhone. It's very convenient for smartphone holders as well. So I see that the combination of this technology can really help us produce the movies that we have in mind. And what about the distances now when you're, do you have to be, can you be at a far distance uh, from the drone or explain a little bit more about that. I'm sure our audience are curious to know more about how this, the intricacies of how this works. Well, the thing is, uh, technology is really fascinating. I mean, distance goes up to 500 meters, which is uh, a lot to cover. Uh -huh. uh, and you can see that range with the ease of viewing the footage right on your device. Uh, so you can control it. Uh, the, basically, the, the horizon is your canvas, and you can paint it the way you want to. Okay, so, uh, and this uh, particular drone uh, can give you high quality shots, very good quality? 
Definitely, it goes up to 4K resolution, which mm -hmm. is really needed, especially mm -hmm. nowadays uh, with the latest televisions that you're able to display such fantastic uh, uh, execution. Okay, know. and is it difficult to use, Iman? Tell us about that. I mean, uh, it must take some training, right, exactly, to get it going the right way and get the right angles and shots and so forth, correct? Well, it does take, uh, you need to train yourself to know how to use it. I mean, the, the remote control itself, to be able to put the memory card, to set up the camera, the propellers themselves, the landing gear, the landing mode. There are a few steps for you that you need to know. This is considered an advanced range, and there are some uh, beginner ranges that are available in the market for those who are interested in the hobby itself. And Iman, do you have to have a special permit or permission to own one of these or is it you can just buy one and use it or how does that work? Well currently uh, we're able to find it in a consumer market so you can actually go to the shop and buy it and I'm, I'm sure there's an age limit. The uh, restrictions come about that you'd have to register your name and information if and when you buy that drone mm -hmm. and uh, followed by some training sessions depending on the purchaser and where you're purchasing it from. And uh, I think I mean you guys of course use it for the uh, very a noble purpose of uh, covering things in Kuwait. Tell us a little bit more about what you guys are using the drone for exactly. Well, as a team, Hawk, we've uh, formed the team to be able to serve the country and uh, showcase the beauty that Kuwait has to offer in terms of infrastructure, history. And so we decided why not be able to use the, uh, the drones to be able to do, to do all the uh, festivities and have them captured on video. Mm -hmm. So that's basically where the story came about. Okay, and can some people now, if they're interested to see some of your fine work, uh, which uh, we took a look at earlier off air, is it, can they do that and take a look at that? Definitely, it's a pleasure actually to have it viewed for the people. So. Okay, uh, you can take a look at that, uh, they can go to any of the social media sites to take a look at that? We do have our Instagram account that's available to the, for the public and it shows various scenes uh, of uh, the footage that the team has contributed to uh, and that's basically to show the, the beauty of the country in addition to um, different countries across the world. Uh, we've been to multiple countries. Uh, for uh, such as? Where have you been? Um, well, my team members have been to Bosnia, Austria, London, the States, uh, Tanzania, um, the GCC countries as well. So it's always a pleasure to well, actually different go Different continents ahead. all yes, around. Huh? Absolutely. And uh, now the team members, how many are you approximately? We are all from Kuwait and we're around 18 members. Okay. Um, we find it uh, a joy to be able to participate uh, in such a hobby and to practice it in the country in addition to international countries as well. So everyone doing their, uh, let's say, line of expertise in this uh, different hobby, correct? It, it's funny you mentioned that because absolutely each and every single one of them comes with a speciality of its own. Like, for example, we have uh, Mr. Nabil Shail uh, is one of our founding members who happens, uh, I mean, he, I don't, he doesn't need an introduction. Uh, for people from outside, a very famous uh, local Absolutely. singer right here in the state of Kuwait, uh, who does not need any introduction. Uh, very nice that he's one of the members and he tell is. us and more. And to be honest, uh, lots of the team members are very talented and they come from high level executive management uh, positions and uh, various backgrounds as well and they all bring in their touch and experience uh, into the table. We're flattered to have such a diverse uh, workforce of the team uh, to be able to deliver the message that we aim for. Iman, we have some footage right here. What are we taking a look at on the monitor? This is the capture of international uh, locations from the team that was submitted. Wow. We thought that this is the best way to show uh, the use of the hobby itself. So if and when we're in Kuwait, we're able to, sh to shoot videos here in the country. But when you go outside, you have such uh, majestic uh, scenery. Yes, I mean, look beautiful. at that. Beautiful, look at that That's too. in the Maldives. The Maldives, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's wonderful. I mean... Makes you want to go right there now. Absolutely. <laughs> Especially I mean, escaping from this cold weather that we're, we're having. We're used to uh, walking around holding uh, our, our iPhones or our cameras and taking picture on a vertical level. Mm -hmm. but Tanzania to be, here. Yeah, but to be able to, yes, that's basically where uh, I was. It's, uh, you know, very clean photography, very nice pictures, but from a distance. So. Thanks to the quality of uh, the, uh, the, the drone. I mean, it has the best quality to offer. This was really nice uh, scenery in Tanzania. Yes. Where are we taking a look at here right now? This is in Turkey. Uh, I mean, uh, the thing about the team is that they like they like to travel, and by traveling, they I mean they take their drones with them and look go to different that. countries and yeah. take pictures and videos as much as they can, uh, showing the, the. I mean, this. Who would have thought that you'd be able to capture such a scene one day and and display it on a video? 
It, it looks very professional, and uh, we're, we're... It doesn't look, it is professional, <laughs> Iman. Very good job, it's and this is a beautiful one right there, too. Uh, it's a humble beginning for the team, and we're pleased to see that uh, it has uh, some good reception from the audiences. Yes, uh, this is in uh, Turkey. We're taking a look at before Maldives, uh, Tanzania, Turkey, you said even uh, London and different Austria, places. Austria, huh? Bosnia, exactly. Okay, and here we're taking a look at some more shots. What are we taking a look at here? Now we move to London, Iman. London. The international submission uh, from the team is uh, really generous. So, I mean, this is just a capture because we had this video done exclusively for the exhibition uh, and we thought that this is, we would share it with uh, KTV2 as a pilot and then we'll have it posted Thank you on very our much channel. For sharing it's a pleasure with us, to yeah. premiere this uh, video in, in KTV2 and hopefully the next step w was, is going to be for us to upload it into our channel and have the viewers uh, enjoy it also. Absolutely, yes. I mean, it's really a pleasure for myself and I'm sure that staff to see this uh, beautiful uh, photography this is so what are we taking a look at here now in bosnia um, if you look at the nature over there every single country has something new to offer uh, so if you were to combine them into different scenes and different locations you'd appreciate the nature in each and every place so the, it's funny because every time we share something new amongst the team, everyone is, gets kind of jealous and decides, oh, that's where I'm going to go to next and we want to share the same ex experience. Or that they'll be able to do a better job. And it's, it's like a, a nice brotherly-like competition between the team members. And Iman, uh, our National Day in the State of Kuwait is coming up in about uh, two months and a half or so, a little over that. Anything planned for that that you're going to do, you and the team members? We take pride to, uh, to, to take advantage of the, um, of the ceremony and the occasion itself by uh, using the aerial photography to capture the festivities and the ceremony that takes place during the uh, National Liberation Day. In fact, that's exactly where the team started this year. That's how we were formed. Mm -hmm. So it's like a, a celebration of a first year anniversary for the team to be able to do it again and improve our uh, execution of the production. Okay, right. so you have something planned for that yes. then, huh? Yes. Okay, hopefully you and the team will come back around that time and share with us some of the uh, beautiful shots that you've uh, taken right here for the audience of uh, KTV2. Any other future projects that you have uh, you and the team in mind for the upcoming future? Well, we are working on an awareness campaign. We've actually launched an awareness campaign in the past and we named it uh, Use It Right, or in Arabic, Kistamilha Sah. Uh, we are focusing on the fact that we need to make sure that the public receives that message and emphasize on the use of the drones in a very safe manner. Um, because some people may use them in a, in a wrong way, right? Ima? Unfortunately, but the thing is maybe they didn't have enough guidance uh, or mentoring and that's where we want to come in. We want to make ourselves present and available, give different uh, workshops and sessions to teach those who, who need the guidance to be able to uh, use the drone the right way. Following the rules. Yes. So, do you currently do that? Will you, or will this be something in the future? You'll be giving workshops and. We have launched the campaign uh, during our uh, in our accounts on Instagram and in social media as a whole, and in our YouTube channel, you'll find a tutorial that we have added for people to know how to use, unpack, and assemble the the drones if and when they purchase them. That's the start of the awareness part, and then comes different workshop to address the people who are really interested in knowing more about it and train them on how to use it and the features and specs of all the uh, the drones. Of and the Instagram is HW Kuwait, all one word, and uh, same as the Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, while the YouTube is uh, HW Kuwait Space Team. team. Yes, correct. HW Kuwait Team. Okay, there you go. That's uh, there it is on the monitor. There, just the YouTube is HW Kuwait Space Team. Yes. Uh, not space, just a, a little space, and then team. Mm -hmm. And you can find out all you need to know about this. Uh, very exciting team of energe energetic uh, uh, young Kuwaiti youth right here in the state of Kuwait. And uh, really nice to have our guest with us, uh, Iman al Adsani. She's a founding member of Team Hawk, uh, uh, that is Hovering Wings of Kuwait. And she was kind enough to also bring the drone. There's an interesting story about the drone that she'll be sharing with you very shortly. Uh, we're going to go to a short break right now and then be back with you to continue our interview with our guests. So stay tuned.
Well, we're back uh, right here on Hela Kuwait. And if you're just tuning in, our guest this evening, we have with us uh, Iman Al Adsani. And Iman is a founding member of Team Hawk, uh, Hovering Wings of Kuwait. And uh, the team uh, recently participated in the Youth Volunteer Forum to combat extremism. And uh, we took a look at that report, Iman, uh, before we came on air. Uh, we had uh, one or two of the uh, team members who uh, spoke uh, during that report. Uh, how is that forum going, Iman? That forum was an excellent opportunity for us to be visible amongst our uh, colleagues and the other volunteering teams. We thought it was our first occasion to actually participate, so we were really honored to be invited in that forum. We've connected on the scale of so many levels with the other uh, respective uh, youth forums. Uh, and volunteers and one of the things we actually intend on doing is to promote those uh, uh, activities by the use of our uh, hobby which is basically the area of photography. Okay great to hear that that was a success and uh, uh, the drone here I mean, some audience may be wondering too you know what are the price ranges for uh, some of these uh, drones, uh, Iman? So in, in terms of the Inspire One in particular, I think at the moment it's around uh, 890 KD approximately. Uh, so they vary in range. There's the Inspire One, there's the Inspire Pro, and then comes, comes the lower range, which is the Phantom 3 uh, onwards. So this one that we're taking a look here is a little under a thousand? Yes. Okay, very nice. And uh, does it need any maintenance to take care of it too? I mean, some, sometimes with the wind and that bumps around and may not land correctly, correct? Well, the thing about Inspire is that the stability of performance is ex excellent uh, and is exactly what one would need. In terms of maintenance, I would agree that you would need to make sure that it's intact. You may maybe need to make sure there's no dust that goes inside the machinery and the equipment itself. So a, few, a little maintenance here and there would not, is not going to harm it. You'd want to make sure that the updates are, are there uh, in terms of the firmware. Uh, firmware. And uh, yeah, once you get the hang of it, you'd know what to do. Iman, we're taking a look at this beautiful video to tell us what we're taking a look at here. This is the lovely Kuwait. This is a, uh, a bit the contribution of the team, and this is the first time we actually view it on air. So we wow. saved it for. Thank KTV you for showing well. it to us. It's a pleasure uh, to actually associate the video that showcases our country with KTV itself. Um, as you can see, the infrastructure here is just majestic. Mm -hmm. To be able to view it from an aerial perspective during the day um, and you, you'd, be, you'd be able to nice catch the... clear day too. That's the thing, I mean the t timing is of the essence here. Capturing the rays of sunlight during the sunrise, the sunset, uh, see it peeking through the buildings, it's one of the things that one would... So the team members are all working sometimes to check in the weather forecast, yes. check in everything, right? It's like an opportunity, we have to chase after it and make sure it happens. Okay then, and, and we're taking a look at, can you take us through this, some of these if you remember even the days when you were out there doing this, take us through some as we're taking a look at the footage. So the temperature is a big factor here. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to make sure that the weather, the temperature is right. Uh, and to, for the video to be clear, for the equipment to tolerate the weather, because the weather in Kuwait is kind of... Up and down, yeah. Yeah, and there's certain limitations that the, the Inspire can handle. In this case, we're looking at Sug Sharg. Um, and we thought that the um, looking at the port, looking at the market itself, and taking that angle, in addition to others, showing uh, various locations in Kuwait, is something that an average person is not e e maybe able to see. In so this beautiful way, that's uh, what makes it, I think, unique, Iman. We love you the and the team really doing a great job. Thank you. We really appreciate it. So. I mean, the beauty comes from the, the country itself. The nature is there. What we did was simply capture it in an, our aerial photography and have it produced in a video that just shows you everything all intact. And that's why we love it. Uh, I mean, it's effortless to be able to use the drone, but then the genius comes after having to put together the videos and the uh, editing uh, and montage as a whole. So then comes this bouquet of various scenes showcasing the country. Does the drone at all maybe fall down at a certain distance or length or can it keep going going on and going how well, does that work there is a the battery has certain limitations in terms of flight time uh -huh. so that is something we are aware of there are some se uh, security measures and settings that are embedded in the system itself whereby if and when the battery runs low it, it comes back from the point that it actually took off from so that's a good thing to know that the GPS is embedded into the system and it comforts the, the pilot who is flying it knowing that there are some um, 
uh, precautions that are in place. Uh, in terms of uh, the flight itself, I mean, one would want to make sure that if and when you're flying, you're flying in a space that doesn't harm anyone, nor does it invade anyone's space. Uh, so there are some rules that you take need these to, precautions. To Absolutely, no? yes. We, I mean, we emphasize on them as well, and as part of our campaigns in terms of using it right. And uh, Iman, now this drone, I think, has a special name or nickname. It's, Can you share with us that, please? It's a funny story. Uh -huh. uh, Tell us about that briefly. I was in, in an expedition to Tanzania with the HUSAC team. It's called the Angry Lion Expedition. And um, I was busy doing my aerial photography. Uh, and I realized that my friends were gone uh, on a hike. So I thought, what's the best way to be able to catch up to them? So I flew the drone towards the hike scene and I was able to see them and they were waving to the, to the drone. And I thought that was a nice moment. So I captured that, that scene. When they got back and they said, uh, Iman, we missed the fact that you weren't with us and I was busy with the photography at the time. So they said, uh, we're going to call your drone from now on Khaltik Masha, <laughs> given the fact that it resembles the, uh, the activity of the show itself. So that was flattering and also funny to link the story to the drone itself. That's really nice. And uh, Iman, we appreciate you uh, joining us right here on Hala Kuwait. Uh, any last words for the audience watching this evening? Well, we would welcome the audience to join us in this new hobby. We think it's going to be very beneficial. We also want to emphasize on the point that we're doing this for the sake of the country to make sure it's a voluntary work and to, to ensure that the public knows exactly how to use such equipment before uh, encountering anything that might actually harm them. So All right, thank then. you so much for the opportunity. It's my pleasure and we wish yourself and the team all the best of luck in your future endeavors. We are speaking to Iman al Atsani, uh, founding member of Team Hawk, uh, Hovering Wings of Kuwait. And we wish the team all the best of luck in their future projects. Right now, we are going to go to another one of our great reports uh, right here on Hala Kuwait. And we're going to go take a look at these public awareness segments uh, provided to us by the Ministry of Interior. So let's go take a look at some of these public awareness segments and then be back to conclude tonight's episode. Stay tuned. هناك إجراء تم اتخاذه مؤخرا بالنسبة لخدم أو العمالة المنزلية بكفالة الكويتيين وكذلك حامل الإقامة وفق المادة 22 الملحقين بعائل الذين خالفوا إقامة الأجانب وترتبت عليهم قرامات معينة تم استحداث إجراء جديد وهو حالتهم إلى الإدارة العامة للتحقيقات لتسجيل القضية ومن ثم العودة مرة أخرى خلال 48 ساعة إلى إدارة الشؤون الإقامة المختصة لطبع الإقامة دون انتظار لصدور الحكم من المحكمة حيث أن الحكم يختص بفترة سابقة وهي مدة المخالفة ويتم منح الإقامة لمدة جديدة وهذه طبعا تسهيل على الأخوة المواطنين بحيث أنهم يستفيدون من السواق والعمال المنزلية الموجودة بكفالتهم لأن إذا كان بينتظر الحكم قد ينتظر لعدة أشهر وهذا فيه مشقة عليهم ولذلك استحدثنا هالإجراء هذا بحيث أن خلال يومين يتم طبع الإقامة مرة أخرى ويتم تنفيذ الحكم من قبل إدارة التنفيذ في في وزارة العدل. Well, with that, uh, we pretty much come to the end of tonight's episode of Hala Kuwait. I hope you enjoyed all that we brought to you on uh, tonight's episode. Uh, uh, me and uh, my friend, the uh, beautiful drone right there, are wishing you a very uh, nice uh, evening. Make sure to enjoy the rest of your viewing right here on KTV2, the family channel. Before I leave you, remember to always take care of yourselves and each other. And let's always remember to respect one another. Have a nice evening and good night for now. <laughs>